All right, welcome to unit six. We're gonna talk about enzymes. I'm going to be honest, this is my least favorite unit um, because I have a really hard time understanding some of the concepts. That's not bad news for you guys though because there's only a couple questions, a couple main takeaways that he wants you to get from this unit and we can talk about what those are. The questions are very consistent um, as we go through the, the old tests and everything. So some good intro reading to do here. First thing you should really know is the definition of KCAT, number of molecules of substrate in the product per molecule of the enzyme times second. So that's one definition. The other definition of KCAT is Vmax over molecular weight of the enzyme. Make sure you have those memorized. Definitely will be asked. Some more good reading to do. A little bit of the naming of enzymes, not too much to worry about. A lot of this stuff is previews for Biochem 2 as well. So like, you know, these charts don't really worry about them too much. Um, good stuff you can sink your teeth into are your lipid soluble vitamins here. There's only four of them, A, D, E, and K. So know everything about them. You know, if, are they hormones? So A, A and D are very similar. Um, no, what they do. I wouldn't, you don't need to specify this, but usually it's going to say things like for immune support or cell growth and proliferation. This is his favorite vitamin A1, um, blood calcium, he'll call out for vitamin D a lot. So those are both hormones. Vitamin E is an antioxidant, so is vitamin C. Uh, so they are often go together. So A and D, C and E, both antioxidant, even though E is lipid soluble and uh, C is water soluble. And prosthetic group coenzyme, which I'll abbreviate PG. You don't need to worry too much about prosthetic groups um, versus co-substrate now. You'll have to know it for biochem too, but don't worry about it too much um, for now. Who doesn't ask about vitamin K too much? So all of your water soluble ones are your B vitamins plus vitamin C for the most part. Um, so that's the main thing I would know about them. If you have extra time and want to learn a lot, then you can say which ones are prosthetic group versus co-substrate. So which ones are in the PG family versus the CS family. And this is all stuff you'll need to know for Biochem 2, but I don't think I see in Biochem 1 tests, to be honest. No guarantees though in a quiz, obviously. So in addition to our um, B vitamins, we have things that they're just called like biotin now. They used to be called B7, but they're getting away from that numbering system. Folate, I think, was B9. Um, so I like knowing these, especially for Biochem 2, because it helps with my uh, abbreviations. So rather than write out uh, pyridoxine or biotin or folate every time, I can just write out B9, B6, B7. So we talked about vitamin C already. So know, know, know your vitamins very well. You do some good reading about the basics of enzymes. We're going to talk a lot about this in class. If we're looking for more stuff, you can really sink your teeth into the MM equation. Make sure you know that. Definitely. Maybe not totally necessary, but I would know this part down here. I'll show you what you definitely need to know as far as what this is concerned, these, these plots. So turnover number is the same as KCAT. So turnover number per second, that's that KCAT we already, already talked about here. The measure of catalytic efficiency 
is this. So you know the headline of this one. K cat over KM is catalytic, catalytic efficiency. Again, K, uh, V max over MW is K cat. So just know those, know those definitions. Know that allosteric enzymes do not obey the MM equation, MM kinetics. They function differently. So we're going to see this summarized, but this is a good one to know as far as um, you know substrates bind here. So if you're going to inhibit an enzyme, you can do it competitively, right in there, uncompetitively, or non-competitively, nowhere close. We're going to come back to that, so keep, th keep that in mind. All right, so this is what you have to be able to do uh, for competitive inhibitor know how to draw this out. So when I say competitive inhibitor, I would be able to draw the, the graph here and know one line goes here and one line goes here. So they intersect on the y-intercept. That's, that's what you would have to know. They intersect on the y-intercept. For uncompetitive inhibitor, I would be able to draw this out. Say, oh, uncompetitive, the middle one, that means they're both parallel. And the last one, non-competitive inhibitor, they have uh, the same x-intercept. So they start from the, the same point and then go differently from there. So be able to draw all those out. I would just mix that in with this chart. So based on what we just said, be able to do this entire chart. How many stars can I draw on it? Uh, know that this one is where they switched. Uh, that was terrible. It always goes C U N. So this one they intersect on the Y. This one they were parallel. And non competitive, they start out at the same point. These are going to be done with arrows. So KM will have an up arrow. V max will have an unchanged or arrow to the side. These will have down arrows these to the side. So if you understand all this, great. Um, this one you can kind of get by with just really memorizing this. Um, so make sure you can, can do this whole thing. Also know where the inhibitor binds. Inhibitor to the enzyme only. Inhibitor to the enzyme and substrate. Inhibitor to both. All right. Probably the most important thing in this unit, we're going to see another summary of this same chart. Um, let's see, on this one, the main thing to know is just the classes. Definitely don't worry about the examples yet. That's biochem 2 stuff for you to worry about. And for the type of reaction, let's take a look at this chart. This one's much better. Let me rephrase this. Bad chart, good chart. Know this one. Um, and everything about it, except the examples. So. Definitely be able to list all that six enzymes uh, classes. You'll need to do that for Biochem 2. So also know if they are reversible or not. So 1 and 2 are either. 3 and 6 go together. They are always irreversible. And 4 and 5 are most or always reversible. Let's see, we know lyases are one thing to two things, or two things to one thing. I isomerases are easy because they have iso in them, in the product all the time. Ligases are always going to be ATP dependent, so they'll have ATP to ADP. Um, Oxidoreductases are a little bit harder to spot, but usually if you see like a proton floating around in there, um, that's a good sign that it, there's going to be a oxidation reduction reaction. Hydrolases are pretty easy because they have water. And transferases you usually have like a phosphate here and then uh, the phosphate ends up on a different group as you go through or something like that. You'll see examples in old tests. So 
So he'll often not call them ligases, he'll call them enzyme class 6 or transferases enzyme class 2. That's what this one's explaining. Lactate dehydrogenase is the big takeaway here. It's tetrameric. So this is a class 1. So this is the sort of stuff you look for for oxidation reduction reaction. You have this H plus here, and then it goes away. You have an H here, and then it disappears here. So you've lost hydrogens. Know that uh, LDH1 is in the heart, LDH5 is in liver and muscle. This is a, another one that our um, questions are drawn from. Heart attack, there'll be an increase in number five, the, the heart one. Sorry, did I say that wrong? Um, yeah, that didn't sound right. Excuse that. Um, this is number one here. So, heart attack, increase in number one. For... Hi. Sorry for the interruption. A group came into the classroom while I was recording here. Um, so I was saying heart attack, increase in one. Hepatitis or anything liver is going to be an increase in five. In normal serum, LDH2 is the highest and LDH5 is the lowest. So those are all the things I would know on this one here. This one, it's really hard to say. Um, he says pick one and he'll, he'll usually throw a question out there. You can group a lot of them together, um, so like myocardial sort of things here, liver things here. Um, so it's, if I had more time I could uh, kind of explain a way to uh, maybe memorize this quicker, but it's one question, I think it's, I think it's worth it just to know it, um, because I am interested in this stuff. But if uh, it, it is a pretty big time investment for one potential question, it's kind of a toss-up anyway. So up to you on that one, but definitely know everything else I said, and those are the questions he asks.